What's up and welcome back to another unboxing review with Gizmo Slip Tech. Today we have the Lenovo Legion Pro 5. This thing is an incredible value, I think, compared to many other laptops out this year so far, especially if you take advantage of the coupon code and link in the description, because that gives you like about $130 off of the sticker price. Sticker price on this is $15.99. I managed to buy it for $14.99. 69 uh, utilizing the extra five coupon code uh, plus the link in the description. So just know that uh, if you take advantage of the links in the description, that's how you get the price that's in the thumbnail at $14.69. There may be more sales that'll bring the price actually even a little lower. Maybe the sale that's currently going on is gonna go away. Uh, you never know what's gonna happen with the Lenovo laptops and especially with their website, because sometimes, you know, they, the, the coupon codes go, come and go, right? So um, that said, if you wanna keep up to date with the coupon codes and what's going on with the Legion laptops, we're gonna be putting those sales up on the website here, this gaming laptop ranked list. And we are gonna be, I'm gonna keep updating this and keep adding more and more information in here. But uh, all of the laptops that you can possibly buy for 2023 is right here on this list. Um, if you are interested in these laptops, all you have to do is click the little expansion button and you get more details about the laptop, including specs, uh, the price, links on where to buy will be located in the um, bottom right, right here, near the bottom technical specs, as well as the links to where you can buy them uh, based on the country that you're in. I am really excited to check out this Legion uh, Pro 5, mainly because of just the tremendous value that this laptop offers uh, at the price point. Um, like I think the currently the best priced laptops for the most bang for the buck are some of the RTX 4070 laptops that are right around $1,500. I know there was an Omen 17 that went on sale uh, last week for about just like 1520, I think. And it had a QHD display, uh, RTX 4070 full TDP, um, a really nice loadout on that machine. This one's also very compelling, the Legion Pro 5, because uh, you get the 16 gigs of RAM, a one terabyte SSD, QHD display on this guy. And of course you get the new Ryzen 7 7745HX, which is basically like one half of the Ryzen 9 7945HX. So this has eight cores, 16 threads, uh, but it's the new Dragon range basically of the processor lineup. So it's got the same, um, high performance focused CPU architecture. So it should be able to push really high clock speeds and push very good gaming performance as well, um, which we're gonna find out today. This will be the first time testing this new CPU lineup um, from AMD this year. So uh, I'm gonna try to do a um, like i7, probably 13700HX versus this Ryzen 7 7745HX uh, CPU basically benchmark comparison in an upcoming live stream uh, benchmark test. So be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on that video. And this is gonna give us a, uh, a brief rundown of what laptops you could consider if you're interested in uh, maybe say laptops that are really competitive in terms of performance for your money, or maybe if you want something a little bit more portable, but still is fairly competitive with your performance for your money. Um, this is certainly more of a uh, budget oriented ish, like mid budget mid range right here at 1469, under $1,500 to me, like right in the center of mid range uh, in terms of pricing. If you're under $1,200, I think you're in the more budget area above $1,200 to $1,600, $1,700. You're in the like mid range and then above $1,700, $1,800, you're starting to get into the more premium laptops. Um, so this is the Strix G16. This is a very compelling uh, gaming laptop for a number of reasons. Probably the biggest reason that it's very interesting is because it's got an i9-13980HX CPU, which is gonna be the most powerful CPU that you can get for uh, $1,600. That is phenomenal CPU performance. If you're a user that needs to have very high CPU performance for productivity, video editing, um, compiling things, whatever you're doing for work, or you, know, you just really want a, a, a future-proof CPU, this is like arguably one of the best CPUs, if not the best, uh, for a lot of the different tasks out there. And at $1599, it's the most CPU chops you can get for the money or very close to. 
Um, and then of course you get the beautiful QHD plus 240 hertz 500 nits display from ASUS, but it's only got an RTX 4050. So that's kind of a trade off. You're getting CPU performance, but less GPU performance for the money. You have the Omen 17. This is the one that was on sale or very similar to this, was on sale for a little bit over $1,500 last week. You can see the normal price is $1,949. Um, so if you miss that sale, it, maybe it'll come back again at some point, but, uh, this thing is going to be the, at when it was on that sale price, it was probably one of the very best bang for the bucks that you can get. Um, now the nice thing about this is got the HX, HX processor, the I seven, which allows you to undervolt. Um, and then of course the RTX 4070 is going to be a bit more powerful than the 4060 that we have in this Legion pro five, uh, uh Legion. Pro 5, yeah. And so the, the naming scheme is so weird because they switched the 5 Pro and Pro 5 backwards. Anyway, um, then we have the Zephyrus G14. This is gonna be a portability focused machine um, that's in the similar ballpark, costs a little bit more than the Pro 5, uh, but it's gonna be super thin, super portable. I did a live stream unboxing of this yesterday, but I was very impressed with it overall. You have the Stealth 14 as well, MSI Stealth 14, if you're looking for portability. Those are the two main ones right now a lot of people are looking at. Uh, there's a couple other ones to consider, but certainly a different type of device, but I'm just pointing it out so people who are not, maybe not familiar with very many gaming laptops, you have like that thin and portable option for you. Then the Zephyrus G16 is another very similar to the G14, but it's got a bigger display and is also focused on portability at the expense of a little bit of performance. Now, the big difference between the Legion Pro 5 and the Zephyrus G16 is that you only have a full HD plus display. Full HD plus is lower resolution. It's gonna be easier to push out those frames um, and it's not gonna to be too noticeable in a 16 inch or smaller display, especially a 14 inch display. I think full HD plus makes a lot of sense. 16 inch, depending on your eyesight, it'll be noticeable or not. Um, but when you're dealing with lower VRAM, like in all of the RTX 4050, 4060 and 4070 laptop GPUs, you only have eight gigs of VRAM, you're gonna run into VRAM limitations more quickly at QHD or 4K resolutions. So uh, I like the Zephyrus G16 um, in terms of its performance and it's kind of its bang for the buck. Uh, it's gonna be really good. The, the MSI Pulse 15, I also did a review on this one. Um, it's a very nice display. Uh, right now it's on sale for $1,469. So the exact same price as the Legion Pro 5 right now. Um, this RTX 4060 is supposed to go up to 140 watt, but it didn't actually get up to 140 watt basically ever during our test, uh, maybe for a short blip here and there. But for the most part, it was much lower than that. And um, that's one of the big questions I have about the Legion Pro 5. What's the actual real wattage that we're going to get on it? Now, next up, we have the Acer Predator Helios 16 with an i7-13700HX, RTX 4060, 16 gigs of DDR5, one terabyte SSD, and a QHD 165Hz 500-nit display for $1,569. This is a pretty tempting offer as well, um, and is very competitive with this guy. You're going Intel, though, instead of Ryzen for your processor, and that comes with a number of pros and cons. Um, so, and it kind of depends on whether you kind of like the Legion lineup a little bit more or the Helios lineup, but I would say in terms of bang for your buck, the, the Legion uh, Pro 5 is still probably a little better um, simply because it's $100 cheaper. The Aorus 15 i7-13700H, RTX 4060, supposed to go up to 140 watt. Again, we'll have to actually test that out. One terabyte SSD, 16 gigs of DDR5, and a QHD. 165 hertz display for 1549. So another Intel option that is should be very competitive with this laptop. Um, there's a lot of really competitive laptops right now with the Legion Pro 5. It's just right now the the Legion Pro 5's got the QHD display. It's got a good GPU. It's got a good processor, a good amount of RAM, good SSD size, and it's under 1500. Where a lot of these other deals are just a little over 1500, which I think really can make the Legion Pro 5, a bit more attractive to some people out there, right? So again, there's a link in the description to this Legion Pro 5. You can also find the link on my sheet here, and you can just, uh, the link's here on the bottom. And if you if we go over to this link, right, uh, we have the Legion Pro 5, it's Gen 8. We've got a 16 inch with RTX 4060. They take right now $80 off, and you get, that puts you down to, um, 1519. 
And uh, when you add this to cart, uh, you can use the coupon. I believe it's extra five is what I used. Things here, and then now we can try to use the coupon code. It's already done gaming extra five. Can I just do extra five? Okay, it's the same. So right now it looks like 1519. I think there must've been another coupon I was able to use, but it's interesting because it says 1664.99 now, but I paid 1469 for mine. So I don't, I think Legion may, uh, Lenovo may have bumped the price up by about $65 between when I bought it and and now in terms of your ordering. Um, but there may, I have to do some looking around. I didn't do looking around right now, but there may be other coupons you can pair with this sometimes that pop up. So it's important when you're looking for Lenovo laptops and you're considering buying directly from Lenovo to look for those coupons because oftentimes you can get five to 10% extra off if you just do some Google search and, and just try slapping some coupon codes in there. You can see we got the Legion name there. On the on this side, I've just got a bunch of shipping labels and everything, which I've already blocked out. So I'm not gonna really show that part, but this is the external box that this laptop shipped in directly from Lenovo. I did pay for this laptop with my own money. Just taking a look at the power brick here, it does come with a plastic shroud on it. And we can go ahead and take this plastic shroud off right now. And you can see right here, it is a 300 watt power brick. It's fairly thin and it's a bit wide, but I like the thin profile. It makes it easy to pack into smaller backpacks and to take with you. Uh, that said, it is still fairly heavy. It's not a lightweight one, but yeah, it's a 300 watt power brick. And if we open up this Velcro, so you got a nice little carry Velcro if you want to make the cable be more portable. We can see that it is about a six foot cable on off coming off of the power brick, which is perfect. I like that. And then we also have the power cable itself, which is also about six feet long. So to the, the, the fact that we have two six feet uh, lengths on this power adapter gives us a total of about a 12 foot length from the wall outlet, which is better than average. Most laptops only have about a 10 foot reach. So that's already some nice points for Lenovo. Inside of here, we've got, I guess, so get started, plug the laptop in, and it looks like we've got, um, but they've got all of the different USB-A types. So USB 3.2 Gen 1, USB 3.2 Gen 1, uh, USB-C, RJ45, HDMI. They tell you basically about each of the ports on here. And here's something very important. Uh, if you use the FN, the FN plus Q button, it, you can change the different power modes of the Legion laptop, which is great. You can also use FN plus R to change the refresh rate of the, the display. So you can go down to 60 Hertz for battery life, uh, improve battery life, or jump up to 165 or 240 Hertz. And I'm not sure if this laptop has 165 Hertz or 240 Hertz yet. We'll find out. Um, you can also control the backlight on the keyboard using the space bar. And it actually rotates between the different um, backlight modes. And I'll show you how to configure and adjust your backlight zones on this laptop. I did test that to make sure I understood how that worked. Um, a little advertisement for the warranty service. They want you to upgrade the warranty to like the ultimate warranty or to get an extended warranty. Um, I did have a Lenovo Legion 7i. That one did need warranty service at one point. I was able to call them. They quickly answered the phone and the person I talked to knew what they were doing. So that was a giant thumbs up for me uh, in terms of warranty support. But I've also heard some bad reports about Lenovo service too. So it's gonna be a mixed bag, I think, just like every laptop manufacturer. But at least they've got a phone number you can dial um, and I've also heard good things too about them because they sometimes do on-site support depending on which um, warranty service you upgrade to. So you can see that the laptop comes with these foam padding along with a plastic wrap around the laptop itself. So there's the Legion uh, Pro 5 right there. And this thing is just, it's, it's a clean looking laptop and it looks 
I think a little bit more premium than some of the other laptops in this price range, especially a bit more of a premium build quality compared to um, say like the MSI Pulse 15 maybe. Um, I think it's very comparable to the Zephyrus series. Uh, that said, I believe this is a metal top lid. I'm not sure which parts of this are metal. This might, is it all metal? This feels like it could be metal all the way around. And maybe some plastic on the sides here. Certainly rubber on the for the bottom feet. But uh, taking a look at the bottom here, you can see that we've got these air intakes all along the bottom here. This is gonna allow a lot of air. We have a very high powered system. We saw that we had a 300 watt power brick included with an RTX 4060. That's typically not included on a 4060. 4060s don't usually that need, need that many watts. All right, so that's nice to see. Um, we have these big, nice rubber feet. You got two in the front and a big, long one along the back. That's gonna provide nice stability when it's on a table. Um, when we go ahead and lift, let's go ahead and lift the lid up and you can open it with one finger, which is nice. You've got a little microfiber cloth, though this doesn't feel quite, it's almost like a papery cloth. I don't think it's actually a microfiber cloth, but it has a similar texture which is gonna protect the fit and finish of the laptop. Um, I love the keyboard layout on the Legion series. It's one of my favorite keyboard layouts and it's one of the reasons why I did pick the Legion Pro 7i for a long time to be my own laptop the last couple of years before I ended up switching out. It's got a nice deep keyboard feel. The keyboards, like the actual keys have nice key response. It's not mechanical though. It does also have a really great number pad layout with this number, like this full size number pad, easy to read. Very important distinction between the Legion Pro 5 and the Pro 7i is that this is not a per key RGB keyboard. Um, this is a four zone backlit keyboard. Uh, it does allow you to customize the colors of each zone, but you cannot do individual key customizations or the really cool animations you get on the Pro 7i, like the rotating ones. Uh, those are just not available on the Legion Pro 5. And I believe there's also no light bar in the front. You can see, you can see there's no light bar in the front here. It's just blank. So you're definitely getting a lot less of the RGB focus and it's just focused on trying to deliver um, as much performance for your money as possible in the Legion Pro 5. So uh, that's kind of a brief overview. The touchpad does feel good. I did notice some driver issues with the touchpad, not registering some clicks for some reason. We've got, I think, all of the screws out now. Um, I wish Lenovo did a pop-up screw like Asus does, because sometimes it can be difficult to get into these Lenovo laptops. Zeskimo is asking about fingerprints. Let's do a quick fingerprint test. It's not really picking up much fingerprints, but I kind of see them a little bit. You see a little bit of fingerprint right there, but it's pretty minor. Like I definitely have a little bit of oily hands right now or fingers. And yeah, they're definitely, you can definitely get some of them there, but it's not nearly as painstakingly obvious as some laptops. So uh, it's kind of a mixed bag, I think for fingerprints. Uh, I'm gonna pop it open with a toothpick initially, then I'm gonna kind of do a little pry action with this guy. It's popping up quite nicely. I do like that. Also, this uh, this backside no longer latches, it looks like. It, it actually disconnects uh, entirely from the underside of the panel, which is a lot easier than the, uh, the, the, the Legion 7i, so that makes it a little bit easier to get in here. I like that. All right, so we have ourselves an 80 watt hour battery. So it's a fairly large battery, close, you know, you can get up to 99 watt hours at the high end. All right, we've got ourselves some huge fat heat pipes right here. One shared heat pipe that goes through both the GPU and the CPU. We've also got these heat plates that are designed to grab heat away from the VRMs. And we got this one as well, this uh, other heat pipe that's dedicated, goes all the way around um, for both of these fan exhausts. Then you also have another dedicated heat pipe just to the GPU here. So considering that we're only supposed to be doing 140 watts to the GPU, I feel like this is super overkill. Um, so that's good. I, I'm assuming we're gonna get phenomenal temperatures on this laptop uh, because of this like just really, really strong cooling solution that they've got set up for the GPU. Now the CPU, because it has this heat pipe uh, that goes across both the CPU and GPU, then it's gonna be able to leverage at least three of the fan exhausts for that CPU, as well as 
uh, two, you know, both of the fans being leveraged. And these fans are fairly beefy and big um, and should push a lot of air for us. Now we have our memory shroud right here. Um, and I'm not gonna worry about taking that off right now. Uh, we do also have our two M.2 slot covers right here. And so if you're looking to upgrade your memory or your RAM, uh, sorry, if you're looking to upgrade your SSDs, you're gonna need to take off these RAM cover or these, these little metal shrouds right here. And then you'll be able to pop in a second SSD or remove both, uh, remove the existing uh, one terabyte SSD and pop in a another one, right? So you can upgrade both of them uh, right here and right here. This interior layout is, I think, effective. It provides a good amount of upgradability because you can access the RAM fairly easily. You can upgrade two SSDs. Uh, I believe this is gonna be the Wi-Fi slot right here if you wanted to upgrade your Wi-Fi. Um, and in terms of uh, ease of access, this was fairly easy to remove the bottom, which I really liked that. Uh, and it and, you know, it wasn't too convoluted getting it to pop up. Um, some of these laptops take, you know, an extra 10, 15 minutes, which can kind of be a pain in the butt. Um, and this, this laptop wasn't a pain in the butt, which is great. Um, I think most people, most people would be able to get into this laptop fairly well, as long as they have something like a little guitar pick to, to pry the laptop apart. Don't use metal to pry the laptop apart. Very important. Now, um, let's go ahead and put this thing back together and we'll, we will move on to our CPU testing. Looks like we got this backwards. There we go. All right, so we're gonna gently kind of push down. Let's get this thing to pop back together all the way around. Yeah, and there's, it does pop in right here in the middle, by the way. So definitely, you wanna make sure that's popped in. And when you're removing the bottom, there is no screw here in the middle. It is just a pop-in, like a little plastic pop-in or something. All right, so there is the, the keyboard. It's already starting to light up. Here is the keyboard. You can see it's quite a uh, nice backlight on the keyboard, but I would say it's not as bright um, or as vibrant in terms of color as what the Pro 7i would be. If you'd go into the Lenovo Vantage software right here, this is the main, the main dashboard. You scroll down. And then here's the Legion Spectrum, um, which is where you go to customize your keyboard colors. You click customize, and then you can turn the keyboard off. Profile one, profile two, profile three. This is kind of nice. Uh, in order to switch the profiles, you can just press um, F, N, and the space bar, and it'll jump between all three of the profiles um, quickly and easily. So if there's like scenarios where you want an all white keyboard like this, you can set this as one of the profiles. You can have it set to go off. You can have profile one be a wave. Um, unfortunately, the wave that they have, I, this is a criticism I have right now of the keyboard, um, it shuts off the keyboard, like it shows the wave and then it shuts off the keyboard. Um, like, it, like it goes up, goes bright, and then it gets dimmer. I don't like that. I much prefer it to be a consistently bright environment so you can see the keys and they stay lit up while you're typing. Um, so I dislike the wave, the animation that they have set up on this, but you can't do anything about that really. Um, if we go to profile two, uh, this is the static. This is where um, I have set up four different colors in the four different zones. And uh, this does not move or change. Um, you can adjust the brightness down or up on this, um, but it's not gonna change much, right? Um, and then on profile three, right now I have it set to static and to be white. So this would be kind of your business environment. Um, meeting, you could just set this up so that it just goes to pure white and there's no RGB on the laptop anywhere. So going into the software, I'll show you how to configure this. Obviously you can click on off and it turns it off. Profile one, you have uh, these options, static, breath, smooth, wave right, and wave left. That's it, you got five different options. Obviously static, she sets it to one color. Breathe, breathing will just activate the light and then dim the light and then activate the light and then dim the light. If you go to smooth, smooth is pretty cool. Smooth will gradually shift the colors um, on the whole keyboard from one color to the next. And you can change the speed at which it changes the colors to make it change color faster or slower and you can up and down the brightness a little bit. And then you got wave right and you got wave left and you can see uh, what it does. I just don't think that this is a very good wave animation. 
it's not uh, particularly awesome. So uh, if I already keep this laptop, I'd probably just keep it on like this profile, like uh, where it's like static, but I can set the colors of each zone to look like a different uh, kind of a rainbow color or whatever. Um, or in certain business environments, I would set it just to be all white probably. But those, that's the customization for the RGB and it worked well and it worked consistently. And you can switch between these profiles just with the FN and spacebar key. Now the touchpad, it just happened right there. I don't know if you saw it, but I tapped the, the mouse pad and it actually did not click. I don't know why, but like, it seems like a decent portion of my clicks, I just did it again. So if I click in the middle of the touchpad, sometimes the click happens and sometimes the click doesn't happen. I just didn't happen again. It like, I, it, the physical click goes off, but the it doesn't actually click inside of windows for some reason. See, so I did it again, click. Didn't, it did it again, didn't register. Did it again. So it seems like every like fourth click, it just doesn't register the click. Um, when I'm physically pressing it down, it's one of the only bugs that I've had using the system so far. Um, so instead, what I've resorted to on this is just tapping my finger, just doing finger taps, because that is very consistent. You can see it jumps back and forth, no problem when I'm tapping on the, um, just using the tap rather than the click. So, and that may be just this touchpad is being a little buggy, or it might be a driver issue that affects a lot of the Legion Pro 5s. Uh, but it was something I noticed that was a bit annoying uh, and it was immediately apparent to me when using a laptop. So and typically um, speaking, laptops don't have this issue. So, you know, let's go over the ports here while we're at it. Um, one thing I do want to mention while we were talking about the touchpad is that I do like the texture and the feel of the touchpad. I kind of wish it was just maybe a little bit bigger vertically, but overall it's just about the right size and it feels good to use. Like it feels like a premium, good quality touchpad. Now on the left side, let me go. On the left side, we have a USB-C and a USB-A 3.2. I believe also those are 3.2s. Uh, we got our power adapter two more USB-A's, HDMI 2.1, USB-C, and then we have another ethernet port. Uh, it's on the downward facing with the clicker, which is a little bit of a bummer. Wish it was flipped upside down right there. And then on the right side, we have our uh, USB-A, our power indicator light, and then our webcam on off switch that disables our webcam. So if you want to uh, ensure that you have privacy, you can use that. And then on the right side, we also have our headset port, which is a bit different. Usually this is included on the left side of the laptop to keep it away from your mouse hand because most people are right-handed. So it's a little bit weird. Um, this is one of the first laptops this year that has had it on the right side, which is uh, quite, a, quite a bit different. Now, there is four fan exhausts. You've got a uh, fan exhaust here on the right, two on the back, and another one here on the left. So there's a lot of fan exhaust. Um, and you're gonna wanna make sure that you keep those areas clear because it's gonna put out a lot of heat when you're playing games. All right, so we are ready to uh, do our speaker test and display test. Is the deck plastic? I, I don't know, I can't tell. It feels like it's probably metal. This, this whole thing feels like a metal laptop or mostly metal with plastic trims. Like I think it's a plastic trim around the edge of the display. It looks like the hinges here might be uh, plastic covers. Um, and it looks like the edges around the laptop here might be plastic as well, but it, it feels like the top deck, the keyboard deck, and the bottom of the laptop are metal. So these Legion Pro 5s are part metal lid, main deck, and plastic parts for the underside panel. Yeah, so it's like I said, it feels like a, um, a combination of metal and plastic. So. Uh, Ultrabook review is usually pretty accurate on that stuff. So I'm pretty sure that is correct. All right. So let's get into the speaker test here. So this is going to be Peter Spacey Roar. Okay. So Nahimic effects are on and we have a bass boost and treble boost right now, currently enabled. Okay. We weren't, we weren't quite at 100% volume, so I upped the volume, and here we go again.
So um, we definitely got some mids. The overall volume is not that loud. Let's keep going. Um, definitely not not super strong bass is what I would say. Faded Aeon, Half-Life. I feel like it did pretty well with that song. Let's go La 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 La, La, La Love You by Deuce Williams. Okay, so uh, the bass, I would say is the weakest part. It's just not much bass to the speaker system. Um, the volume is pretty decent and the mids and the highs are all right. They're not super amazing though. I'd say the speaker system is like a 7.5 probably out of 10. Um, not, it's just not as loud and not as clear and not as much bass. It might even be a little lower than 7.5. It might be 7.3, somewhere, somewhere in that range. So 7.3, 7.5. Um, Yeah. Like, it's not bad, though. I've definitely had way worse speakers on laptops. Um, so it's basically uh, slightly ab about above, just about average, a little bit above average. I, to, me, I, to me, I kind of almost do the ratings between, like, like five as being very bad uh, and 10 as being, like, superb. So 7.5 is basically, like, average or maybe slightly below average um, if you're 7.3. Now let's go ahead and go on to our display test. Again, this... Color checker kind of underestimates the color gamut by, you know, 8% or something like that. So we had 92% sRGB, 73% Adobe RGB, 73% of P3 color gamut. And so that means that really we're very close to an 100% sRGB, close to 81% Adobe and P3 color gamuts, which is, it's good. It's, it's a good display. It's, a, it's, a, it's just not as premium as the higher end displays out there. And that's the trick for me about this laptop is that uh, this one is priced excellently. Like for this display at this price point, it's a very good display. I, I think it's a highly rated display. Um, it's just, you know, when you go to something like the Pulse 15, you're getting 100% P3 color gamut. It's a more colorful display, even if it's not as bright um, of a display. Now I'm gonna go ahead and see what our refresh rate is. We've got 165 Hertz on this display. So I just wanted to point that out. This is not the 240 Hertz display. This is 165 Hertz display. All right, so let's check it out our brightness and color gamut. Whoa, this is way below the advertised brightness from Lenovo. Um, I believe it was supposed to be a 500 nits brightness and we only got 356 for our brightness and 940 to one for our contrast ratio. Um, our nits brightness at 0% is only two nits bright. That is so dim. That's, that's nice if you're going to work in all super dark environments a lot. Um, that said, 356 nits is less than I thought we were going to get. I'm going to be honest with you. I, I thought for sure we would have more than that. Yeah, like it seems brighter than that. It seems brighter than 350 nits to my eyes. It seems closer to 500 nits, which is, so it's, it's very weird to me that we're not hitting closer to 500 nits. And it makes me almost want to test it one more time just to verify that number. Because like I said, Lenovo like advertises it, I believe is 500 nits. So let's try, let's try measuring it one more time. I'm just going to do, I'm going to do it just at 100% brightness for all the tests. Okay. So yeah, you can see it measured it at 356 or 357 nits for all of our tests right there and 930 to one for our contrast ratio. Um, so overall, 
for the money, for a, a display that's coming at you for under $1,500, that is excellent overall. Good value, I think. The only downside is um, when you compare it to something like the Pulse 15, you're not getting as high a color gamut. Um, the Pulse 15 had a better, a more colorful display, even if it wasn't quite, I don't know, it, it wasn't 16 by 10, it was 16 by nine. So I guess that was the trade-off there. But the Pulse 15 display, I think it was a little bit better um, for the money. Wow, there's almost no backlight bleed on that screen at all. When I look at the camera, it kind of looks like it's picking up a little bit in the top left corner and maybe a little bit in the bottom right corner. But to my eyes, it has, like I'm moving my head around and I'm not seeing almost any backlight bleed. That's good. That is, that's a very minimal to no backlight bleed on this unit. Okay, so let's talk about the Lenovo Vantage software. And this is how you control your laptop. You got a couple of bars indicating your CPU performance or whatever, your SSD. These are pretty minimal. Anyway, what you wanna focus on is this thermal mode setting. This is where you can set your performance mode, all right? You can have a balanced mode. And a balanced mode, you can enable Legion AI engine to detect gameplay and tune CPU, GPU performance. Um, and then there's also quiet mode, which is gonna keep your laptop um, throttled down more and you make less fan noise. And then you have custom mode. And inside of custom mode, you have performance. So you can adjust your CPU, uh, short-term power limit, long-term power limit, peak power limit, CPU temperature target, CPU long-term power limit. Then you also have your CPU GPU dynamic boost, which is interesting. You can also set your GPU TGP, you can set it up to be 135. You can also have it be based on a temperature limit. Um, total processor power target in terms of total watts. Um, and then you also have your GPU to CPU dynamic boost you can, you can adjust. There's a lot of settings in here that you normally wouldn't have for a lot of laptops. And I have not fiddled with these settings at all. So um, this might warrant a whole nother live stream where we test all these settings and see what the best settings are to get the most performance out of your laptop. Um, for today, we're gonna be doing performance mode for our testing, okay? So performance mode will be our uh, testing perform. It should basically set us to maximum th uh, power limits and, and all of that. You also have this GPU overclock uh, button, which allows you to uh, basically do a one-click GPU overclock. This will basically change your factory specifications of your computer, and it'll it'll essentially just like boost your um, clock target for your C, uh, your core clock on your GPU and your memory clock. That's my understanding. Um, I'm not sure how much it boosts it, but it'll boost it by like probably like a hundred or two hundred on your um, your core clock. Probably like a hundred, uh, maybe maybe one fifty. I'm not sure. I'm, I, so you also have a GPU working mode. This does have advanced Optimus allowing you to switch on the fly. If we hop into the NVIDIA control panel, um, it'll let you go to manage display mode. And then right here, you can set NVIDIA GPU only mode. We'll apply that. And that's gonna keep our NVIDIA GPU on permanently and not allow you to have good battery life but it'll also make it a little bit uh, easier when you open and close games because when you open and close games, there's like a moment of stuttering and delay every time you open and close the game. Interesting, did it not actually switch? I want NVIDIA GPU only mode. Yes, I want to keep these settings. Okay, all right, so there it goes. Now we're in GPU only mode. It, it, for some reason, it failed when the first time I tried to activate it. I want to point out that there is uh, G-Sync. So you do have G-Sync uh, enabled on this monitor, which is really nice to see. Basically, the, the main things you're gonna fiddle with inside of here is just gonna be your display mode if you want to be able to like for sure know if you're on the integrated GPU for battery life uh, or on your dedicated GPU, then you can switch between these. Um, you can basically force it to, to go to one or the other. And then I also wanna point out under our system information that we have a 140 watt listing for our GPU TDP. Now we're gonna find out if we actually can push 140 watts to the GPU here in a few minutes. So we got 17,901. Wow, that's basically right in the ballpark of what I was thinking. A little bit lower than I was kind of hoping, but still that's, that's pretty good. Especially for only eight cores, 16 threads. So right now we've got an all core boost of 4.8 gigahertz, basically 4.79, 4.81. 
gigahertz across all of the cores, which is excellent. You know, we've got eight big fat cores, no efficiency cores, 16 total threads, four and eight core part. We're pushing some really good performance. So I'm, I'm, seeing, I'm seeing some really good performance now. Uh, let's take a look at our temperatures. Oof, our temperatures are very spicy at right at 100 degrees. Um, smack dab at the 100 degree mark. Um, looks like we maxed out at 95 watts at the peak there. So 17,000.8. I'm curious to see what we get now in a 10 minute test. Looks like we're getting right around 17,800 um, in these little short runs. Let's go ahead and go for a 10 minute test and we will reset. All right, so 4.81 gigahertz, instantly hitting 100 degrees Celsius. Interesting, our core temps are actually, looks like only one of the cores is hitting the 100 degrees. So it looks like core seven is 99.9 .9 degrees Celsius, 100 degrees. Um, and the rest of the cores, oh no, we got core five also. Core seven and core five, both of those are close to 100 degrees. So to me, that tells me that we're likely looking at a bad CPU pace job, or at least a mediocre CPU pace job, at least in this unit, because the other cores are only in like the 80, like, like that one's 78 degrees on core zero, 87 on core one, 87 on core two, 95 on core three, and then 99 and 99 on core five and seven. So that's a little too bad in that sense. That said, we're also pushing 85 watts of power through that CPU on a consistent basis, though we were doing 96.7 watts at the peak. So it's interesting to see and a little disappointing to see this. So if I saw this, if I bought this laptop, uh, I would do one of two things. I would either return it or I would repace the CPU myself to, uh, to improve the CPU performance um, and temperatures. Because most, most likely what's going on, when I say it has a bad CPU paste, is they probably either didn't put enough CPU uh, paste on there or the CPU paste didn't quite spread evenly and part of the CPU um, just is not covered with the paste. So um, the side where core five and seven is, maybe that's a, a corner of the CPU or something, it may not have good contact or pressure or, or proper thermal paste coverage. The, the, the important thing to keep in mind here is that even though the temperature is spicy at 100 degrees Celsius, it's not gonna hurt the CPU. What it's gonna, ha what's happening right now is it's hurting our potential performance a little bit. Simply, simply put, the, the, the potential performance, you know, this, this wattage that we're getting at 82 watts, we're being thermal throttled because we're hitting that 100 degree headroom and it's causing the CPU to drop in performance so that we don't go above 100 degrees Celsius. And so as we drop in thermal, as we thermal throttle down, we lower our wattage to generate less heat. And that of course hurts our core clock speed. So if we were to go up here, you can see we're down to 4.7 gigahertz instead of 4.8. And I imagine if, if we could, if, the, if we weren't thermal throttling at all, maybe we could go to that solid 4.8 or maybe 4.9 gigahertz, somewhere up in that range. Um, not sure exactly what the max would be um, for the all-core turbo boost, but it's certainly gonna be a little bit higher than what we're seeing right here because of the thermal throttling. Okay, so looking at our averages, we averaged 81.7 watts during the 10 minute test. We've hit 100 degrees Celsius on the CPU uh, package. And that's very, very hot. Uh, we've had thermal throttling. We've averaged 4.74 gigahertz across all of the cores. That's a little bit sad that we're not hitting, um, you know, max potential cores because of that thermal throttling. Okay, so we ended up getting 17,805 for our 10 minute score, which is still very good for a laptop in this price point. Under 1,500, 17,800. That's phenomenal. The main issue though, is that you're just, you're running into those really high temperatures, which a lot of people don't wanna to have to worry about. Oh, you know what I'm also gonna do? Well, let's go ahead and try one run without a 10 minute test on battery power. Are you guys ready to see some battery power test? Here's a battery power run. We are doing 4.2 gigahertz. Our temps are very good at 70 degrees. We're pulling 45 watts of power to the CPU. 60, 69 degrees 
on the CPU, 4.1 gigahertz across all the cores. This should still be a very nice score for a battery only run. Um, so we got 15,464, wow. That is a great score for a battery, um, a battery only run. So you're still able to capture the vast majority of performance, even when you're on battery life, which I think, I think that's very important for some people out there. Right now we're doing 50 watts of power well on battery. Now it's coming back down to 45. Impressive. Really, really good performance while on battery. Um, let's see what we get for the second run. 15,762. Yeah, I think you're going to be pretty uh, consistent in that area range approximately. Okay, so here we are. We're in Time Spy. We're in performance mode. We are doing 2,500 megahertz on the core clock. 103, 105 watts to this RTX 4060 in performance mode. We are not pushing 140 watts again. You know, the Zephyrus G14 actually pushed higher wattage than this. The Zephyrus G14 was doing like 110, 112 watts to the RTX 4060 in the review two, two days ago. Now, overall, in this test so far, our CPU temperature has been great at 66 degrees. Our GPU temperature also great at 63 degrees. 105 watts of power there. Again, 2,500 megahertz on the core clock. It's quite clear to me that the GPUs in the RTX 4060 really are not designed to go up to 140 watts, at least um, based on what we're seeing in all of these laptops. We have seen um, three laptops, a bunch of laptops actually, that were supposed to go up to either 120, 125, or 140 watts to the RTX 4060, and we're just never seeing that level of load um, being applied to the GPU. And I'm guessing the reason is because we've got the RTX 4060 here. We're hitting 2,500 megahertz on the core clock without needing more wattage. And so that just basically, to me, uh, says that there's almost no point, I guess, in for those GPUs to pull more wattage because they're already probably maxing their core clocks to be as high as they could possibly be for the most part. Um, that's, that's my guess. Um, Notice in that CPU test, we saw 97 degrees on the CPU again. CPU getting very hot and very fast. We got 10,417. The CPU score, 11,410. The GPU score being about average for what we're seeing with RTX 4060s. We've seen it range from 10,300 to 10,600 approximately. Like I said, it's a little unfortunate that we're not seeing more gains from 140 watt RTX 4060s. The nice thing about this discovery, right, is that, actually, let's go to performance mode, but I wanna just turn on GPU overclock. All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna try flipping on GPU overclock and see what that does. We're gonna see what that does to our performance. Also, our CPU score at 11,411 is very good. Uh, the good thing about the RTX 4060 being basically maxing its potential performance at closer to 100 watts, maybe 105 watts, is essentially you don't need to get a thicker laptop to get the maximum performance out of the RTX 4050, 4060, or 4070. You can go for something thinner and have basically the same gaming performance levels um, as the thicker laptops. Um, and basically, the only real benefit for buying a thicker laptop this generation is going to be uh, if you were to go for the RTX 4080 or 4090, uh, especially laptops chunkier than this one, <laughs> especially, right? I mean, the nice thing about like when you compare this Legion Pro 5 versus, say, the Zephyrus G14, the G14, Goodness, those temperatures on the GPU were pretty spicy. They were getting up to like the 85, 86 degrees, um, very close to thermal throttling for a lot of different games. And that was on maximum fans. I, I don't think we're going to have that problem at all with this laptop. This laptop is going to not thermal throttle or not even get close to thermal throttling almost ever. Um, now, look at our GPU boost clock. We have boosted our GPU clock by 150 and our memory clock now has gone up by 200 with this GPU OC 
that Lenovo did out of the box. And so a 150 slash 200 overclock, I think is gonna be stable in almost every single gaming uh, application um, or GPU utilization thing, pretty much for almost all of the RTX 4060s. I've only seen stability uh, be introduced for uh, when you overclock closer to like 200 or maybe 225 for the core clock. Uh, so I think that's, I think it's probably a pretty safe OC to just flip on that overclock inside of the Lenovo Vantage software to get a bit more performance. Um, and there's definitely a part of me that thinks that if you are gonna get a thicker laptop like this, one of the advantages is you don't need to worry about the temperatures like you do in a th thinner laptop. So why not flip on that OC and just run it all the time like that? Okay, so we ended up getting 10,880, which is very good. 11,605, basically a very similar CPU score. A nice bump to the GPU score though. Overall, a very nice score for an RTX 4060, uh, right in line with what we've seen with just about everything else. Um, and at the same time, we're seeing excellent temperatures, which is great to see. That's what we wanna see. Flip off our OC. Man, I feel like you've just, if you buy this laptop, why wouldn't you turn that on? You would, I think. I think you would turn that on. Um, that said, should we test it with OC enabled guys or not? I think we shouldn't to keep it apples to apples with the other laptops. We have fan speed custom. Here's your fan speed control. And you can see that uh, you do have custom fan speeds. Uh, let's go to 3D Mark. GPU TGP, can we set it to 135 watt? I'm just gonna set it, I'm gonna try clicking this 135 watt and see what happens. It's an option they have in their system, so why not set it? I have a feeling this is not gonna impact performance much, but this could impact performance, so might as well test it. Um, let's just open up Time Spy and just see if, see if the TDP changes. All right, so our GPU is only at 55 right now. It's not working as it, as it should. Can we try this? So um, I think, so we, we also had 55 watts there for some reason. I don't think it's, I don't think this is gonna work. We're gonna need to stay in performance mode unfortunately, and I will turn on GPU OC for you guys because that's what you guys probably want to see this tested at. So we're going to run it with GPU OC enabled. Um, let's see if we can get Apex Legends to open properly for us. Okay, well, I guess we won't be able to test Apex Legends. Let's go into see if Warzone 2 works. We are set to full screen exclusive. 165 hertz refresh rate, 2560 by 1600. DLSS on quality. We're gonna be set to minimum sex specs, but with texture resolution high. Okay, so let me... So we got 100, 110 FPS right now, 108. So right here, now we're in the right order. Okay, because our, our, our FPS is in the wrong order, I think. So we're averaging 107 FPS, 71%, uh, 71 for our 1% low initially here, which is very good. This is higher than we were getting with the Zephyrus G14, but not as high as we were seeing on the i9 or... Ooh, he got us. We didn't have a good gun. The GPU is 69 degrees. The CPU... Oh, we got people fighting right here. Gun sucked. <laughs> so we're going to be in full screen, 2560 by 1600. We're gonna turn on DLSS. Uh, it's gonna be set to the highest quality setting, which is quality. We're gonna to go to high settings and we are gonna turn ray tracing on to high. All right, so these are the default settings that we're gonna do. 
We're about to run through control. We're pulling 108 watts of power to this, the GPU. We are being GPU bound. Um, our CPU is 89 degrees, which is a bit on the spicier side. Uh, 67 degrees for the GPU. And our fan noise is very minimal right now. So that's very good. We're averaging 61 FPS with 44 for our 1% low. This gameplay is very good considering that we've got everything set to maximum right now. Oh, I just blew that guy up. Dang, brutal. Um, so overall control is going to be very playable, um, though that's on ultra settings. With maximum ray tracing, you can obviously get way higher FPS very, very easily. Okay, so here we are, CSGO. We're at 300 FPS. We're at QHD. Settings are on high. We're pushing 400 FPS right at the edge between 340 and 400 FPS. Um, obviously, this is going to be really great performance. For CSGO, makes sense. Yeah. Ptolemy, I would probably go Intel i9, but if if I, if you were if uh, if you were to actually look up some benchmarks, I would just Google like a set of Corsa Competizone Ryzen or Intel and see which see which one performs better between the the Intel i9 13900K and the top um, like Ryzen chips like the I don't know 5800X3D or something like that or uh, is it the 7800X3D? I'm not sure which one the, the top Ryzen desktop chip is off the top of my head. Um, but you just want to look at the top Ryzen chip and then look at the top Intel chip and try, try to see if anyone's done a comparison in a set of Corsa. And then most likely the CPU architectures are going to translate pretty closely to the, um, to the laptop CPUs. Because um, they're, they're basically like stripped down desktop chips right now in these laptops. So, so yeah. The Ryzen 3D runs it better. Yeah. Well, if the Ryzen 3D runs it better, then you probably want to go to the Ryzen 9 7945HX. But I'm guessing you're probably going to get really good FPS in either one. And if you're going with a triple monitor setup, you're going to end up being GPU bound anyway because it's such a high resolution. So, Okay, so we ended up getting 321. 321.55. Very nice. All right, so let's go full screen. Frame generation enabled. So we're going to be all ultra settings with ray tracing enabled, and then we're going to have frame generation on with DLSS on quality. Oh, thank you for uh, reminding me about the camera. All right, so, uh, whoa, we're getting some stutters there. We, we're getting stutters because the GPU is dropping in wattage down to 20 watts for some reason. I'm pretty sure that invalidates the test. We'll have to rerun this test. I don't know why we're running into those stutters, which is kind of interesting. It's the first time we've seen that stuttering in any of the games so far. But um, obviously there was some kind of bottleneck. Maybe the CPU was bottlenecking or maybe something in the background was loading. Causing it to bottleneck and drop in wattage. I saw 120 watts on the GPU there for a moment. Oh, LSP says VRAM limit. Yeah, we're running into 7,500, uh, 77. There it is. Eight gigs right there on the VRAM. Um, oh, so I had just started the benchmark when it stuttered. It caused a stutter resetting the benchmark results. So there we go. 51 FPS was our average, but we're going to, we're going to rerun it back again. So we're doing 48 FPS, 49 FPS. We are hitting our VRAM limitations right here. Oh, I bumped it. We are hitting our VRAM limitations right here at eight gigs. Um, we are GPU bound, we're not CPU bound. I'm not seeing any stuttering happening. Oh, I just did. I just saw some stutter happen. That's probably because of the VRAM buffer being filled up. You know, it's interesting. I don't remember. I don't remember Cyberpunk filling out the the VRAM like this before. Like I, I, I didn't think that it it was so demanding on the VRAM. I wonder if it changed with the recent updates.
Makes me want to go back and check some of my old uh, videos and see what the VRAM usage was on previous tests. That round we got 50. Our min was four, very low. If we go down here and we try to drop our textures, where's our textures at? Okay, let's just try all ultra settings, no ray tracing and see how much VRAM is being used. Okay, so we're still hitting, now that we have no ray tracing enabled, we are still hitting our close to the max VRAM limitations, but we're not actually pumping all the way up to the eight gigs anymore. I have not seen any stutters so far. I just clicked, yeah, so I just, I just tapped the MSI afterburner to start calculating and our 1% low is excellent. So we're not, we're, we're close to the max VRAM utilization, but we're not actually pushing up into it right now. Um, but it is definitely a little worrisome that we're getting so close, even in Cyberpunk now. Oh, interesting. So you're not gonna be able to change it once you have it set, you have to restart the game. That's kind of silly. So this run, we're running um, frame generation, DLSS on quality, everything's set to ultra, right? And we're on QHD plus 16 by 10. We got 76.8 for our FPS. Our min was very good at 63, which is, is, is good. Okay, I'm gonna try and go back to the main menu, see if we can change our textures inside of there. I am gonna go into settings, let's go into video, graphics. Texture quality right here, low, medium, and high. So we'll try setting it to low. We'll go ray tracing ultra, but medium. So max 17 with an i9 and four. And we'll go to uh, quality again. There we go. Why it won't? It literally it the texture quality keeps jumping back to high. It won't let me do anything except high. I wonder what. I wonder what Cyberpunk did to their game. It like seems to have taken a step backwards. Our uh, Cyberpunk DLSS on quality, frame generation enabled, ray tracing on ultra, we're running it back again. We're getting 47 FPS. And there's our 1% low stutters right there. So yeah, we're definitely running into some VRAM limitations. We're pushing up to that eight gig VRAM limit for sure. And we actually, we're not able to change the VRAM down. Um, and in a similar test, I wanna show you this. Uh, once this test is done, I will show you a test that we did on the Omen 17 with an RTX 4090. And we were pulling over nine gigs of VRAM. So there's another stutter right there with the VRAM. So in order to get this to pull less VRAM, we probably got to try using, uh, I don't know, either reducing DLSS or let's try going down to performance. Um, so right here, I think you can see this now. Yeah, so you can see right here, uh, this is on the so Omen 17. The We're doing nine gigs of VRAM usage um, at 16 by nine aspect ratio, which is actually so a little bit lower resolution than what we're doing now. So 90, Cyberpunk is, is even wanting over is eight gigs of VRAM uh, in this test. So, and wow, we're definitely running into some more stutters. Look at that. Um, we're running into so many stutters. I'm gonna go ahead and just restart. I'm gonna restart the system and see if that will help improve our stuttering or not. If we're still seeing it on a fresh restart of the system, that certainly is um, a really good example of why you really want more than eight gigs of VRAM for QHD resolutions. Right, so we're on high quality settings. Okay, so we notice that we, we, are, we are pulling, this is the Zephyrus G14 right now that we're looking at. And we are pulling 8.16 gigs of the VRAM so right now. Actually, We're more than 8 gigs. Watts to the GPU, and we are getting uh, fairly low 1% lows in this Cyberpunk. But the, the stutters were not as bad. Interesting. Let's go back into some more, a little further back into the history. 
and check up older cyberpunk. Let's try the Zephyrus G16. See, um, let's check before they updated the game with ray tracing Dude. overdrive because that may, that may have been where it got messed up. Wow. This live stream has 1.26 million views now. I did not even realize it was that crazy. Oh, this is on full HD plus though. This isn't QHD. Well, let's see what the let's see what the VRAM usage is on this. This one okay, at so 1200p is doing 7.5 gigs of VRAM utilization. So even at 1080p full HD, it's still wanting 7.5 gigs. That's that's a lot of VRAM utilization for Cyberpunk. And I guess it's another game where you might run into uh, VRAM limitations. Okay, so under graphics, we're on medium textures. We should have everything set. Yeah, so we're still set to ultra settings with ray tracing on ultra. Okay, so, so far, so far no stutters. 54 for our average, 44 for our 1% low. We are bumping right into that eight gig cap though. But so far it's not caused uh, stuttering, which is good. Oop, there's some stutters right there. Uh, yep. So it looks like even medium textures are not enough. Let's go ahead and jump back in and we'll set it to low textures. Okay, so now we're on low quality textures. 55 FPS, 43 for our 1% low. There's some stutters there as we pushed our textures up again to 7.8 gigs. I think in, uh, in, in this kind of game, I think what you're looking at is, oof, that was the last stutter right there. Um, I think what you're looking at is you need to, you need to, uh, you're going to need to be willing to um, down your resolution. I, I think that's going to be your only solution. I, let's try, we're on low textures right now. Let's try also downloading our DLSS to a lower resolution first before we actually lower our, our primary resolution. Uh, 54 FPS, but we had a, a gnarly stutter. All right, we're going to try going down to performance for our DLSS resolution. Let's see if that reduces our VRAM utilization. It doesn't look like it is. All right, so I've reset the MSI Afterburner. We're at 74 average FPS. We've only hit seven gigs right now on our VRAM. Finally, we're hitting in the right range. I believe we're under our VRAM limitation. And let's see, right here is where we're always stuttering previously. As we transition to the outdoor environment, it needs to load all these additional textures. And so far, no stuttering. Phenomenal, okay. Awesome to see, awesome to see. 74 FPS with 58 for our 1% lows. Okay, I think we finally hit a stable FPS with, with low textures and DLSS on performance. Um, but man, that's a lot of little troubleshooting to try to optimize the resolution to keep it at the 2560 by 1600. And in some ways, you might be better off just dropping down to 1200p resolution and then do DLSS on quality. I don't know, you know? So um, 75 for our one, uh, 75.6 for our FPS and 33 for our min. Dang. Ultra mode, ultra preset with full screen, 165 hertz, QHD. All right, so here's a game, finally, where we're not running into VRAM limitations. Uh, 6.9 gigs on all ultra settings. We're getting some solid FPS that's smooth and non-stuttery, which is nice to see. Um, that said, our FPS is not super high. Um, you know, a game like this, where you got crazy monsters coming at you, I feel like you might want a little bit higher than 60 FPS. Right now we're averaging 58 FPS. Once again, we're hit, we're, we are, well, right now we are GPU bound. It looks like we're hitting 100% GPU utilization. As we turn around, look around, we're still being GPU bound, but our CPU is basically barely keeping up. 97 degrees, 96 degrees to the CPU. 
Um, we're doing 68, 63 watts to that Ryzen chip, and that's a lot of wattage to a Ryzen chip. Um, yeah, that's a lot of wattage, especially for only eight cores on this Ryzen chip. So, all right, so we're going to flip around. We're going to start our benchmark run. 7.3 gigs on the VRAM now. So we this we might run into VRAM limitations in this, maybe in some more complex areas of this game. I'm not sure. Um, but we're not seeing any stutters, at least in this area right here. We're averaging 61 FPS, 44 FPS for a 1% lows. We'll also drop down to 1080p and redo the test. This is obviously gonna be some fantastic gameplay and a very enjoyable gaming experience right here. But yeah, all of these VRAM limitation issues just make me in general, like if you're gonna go with an eight gig VRAM card, you know, many games will play just fine in QHD, but a lot of the newer games are gonna run into VRAM limitations and you're gonna to have to just be willing to fiddle with the settings until you turn the textures to the right level. Uh, you might have to drop them to low or medium. Um, or you might have to lower the resolution or reduce your DLSS to a uh, slightly lower setting so that you don't get the 1% stuttering. Um, right, so, all right, so let's go into our graphics. We're gonna set this to 16 by nine. We're doing this so that we have a more comparable benchmark with some of the other laptops out there. Um, Cause I did most of the testing with 4060s at this resolution. Notice that we are also no longer at 100% GPU utilization. Well, we were for a moment there. Woo. Our CPU now is pumping up 71 to the watts, 72 watts, 100 degrees on that CPU. Our VRAM went down to 6.3 gigs, jump, lowering our re resolution. So it gives us more of a nice buffer with our VRAM there. 99% um, GPU utilization. Um, so we're still getting very high GPU utilization and our GPU temperature is excellent at 63 degrees. Um, our average FPS right now hitting 91, 57, which is pretty good. I, I have to actually see how that lines up with some of the others. 101 degrees right now on this Ryzen chip, just riding that thermal throttle right now. We're just, we're just by buddying up to it and being like, hello, I like to ride the wave. We're hanging 10, 102, we're dipping our toes in the water. Uh, wonder if we're gonna thermally crash right now <laughs> with the thermal throttle. Uh, yikes, 102, <laughs> brutal. That is brutal. Uh, these Ryzen chips, they just, they do not cool as easily, it seems like, uh, compared to the Intel chips. And when you have a bad pace job, uh, like what we, I think we have in this unit, uh, we end up with just one or two of the cores just getting really hot. Uh, so far, it's not. I'm not seeing any damage on instability. Or we're not stuttering on our 1% lows, but I would not want to keep this laptop uh, long-term without fixing the pace job, probably. So I think almost for sure, we're going to do a repaced live stream with this laptop and see if we can fix this uh, at some point in the future. Would you guys like that? I think that would be really cool. So um, let me know in the comments if you really wanna see that. I'm very curious about that. But uh, overall, still very good performance in this game, but crazy temperatures as well. Okay, so we should be good to go. We're on frame gen We're on high quality ray tracing preset, 2560 by 1600. Uh, frame generation is enabled. DLSS should be on quality. Let's just make sure DLSS is on quality. LSP Inspire on 7501 flashbacks. Laptop went to 100 degrees Celsius, 102 degrees Celsius quickly at 45 watt only CPU. GPU cannot push 50 watt constantly due to thermal problem. Cooling pad only slightly mitigated the problem. Changing to a Legion or SCAR. Yeah. So, so far, looking at our, evaluating this, at QHD plus resolution, we're still doing 6.3 gigs of VRAM usage, which is good. We're well within the bounds of our VRAM limitations. We shouldn't have, v, we shouldn't be VRAM limited here. We're doing 105 watts to the GPU with 100% GPU utilization. We're hitting nonstop 2655 on our clock speeds for the GPU. Our CPU temps are in check at 86 degrees, so that's good. 
Um, 5.1 gigahertz on that CPU, which is very good. Uh, 71 FPS for our average, which is obviously going to be very playable and a nice FPS to play this game at. Um, I think this is going to be a really good overall gaming experience on the Legion Pro 5. So we've got ourselves an excellent result overall, I believe, with uh, minimal to no issues. Um, good to see, <laughs> finally, a new recently released game uh, playing perfectly. 75.42 for our FPS averages. Very nice. Let's move on to God of War. 16 by 10 aspect ratio. DLSS is on quality. Graphics is on ultra. Okay, so our CPU right now is hitting 99 degrees Celsius. Once again. Oh my goodness. All right, so uh, 97. That said, our VRAM is great at 5.7 gigs. That's not a problem. 97 degrees Celsius on the, the CPU. 54 watts, 55 watts to the CPU. 105 right now to the GPU. Let's go ahead and start our benchmarking run. Sixty-one fifty. Our excellent one percent lows. Uh, the Ryzen chip is doing really, really well here. Um, it's not a problem. Let's go ahead and just drop. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think, I think we're just gonna call it there. I was gonna say maybe we do ten eighty p, but let's just move on to the next game. We're on all ultra settings. Ray tracing is enabled. Textures are on low. All right, DLSS is on quality. So far, no problems. As we run through Hogwarts, notice our VRAM is kicking up. We're at six point, we were at 6.3, then we're at 6.9. We're over seven now for our VRAM. Uh, 7.0. 7 we definitely had a few stutters there. And usually with Hogwarts, you don't actually reach the full max. Um, on terms of what it says is being used, even though you are still stuttering. Yeah, we're still stuttering. Um, though the stutters, the stutters in Hogwarts, they're not like as game breaking usually, um, or they can be not as game breaking. It really depends. Okay, so now that we've done our run through, we're going to go ahead and reset over here and start running back up. Overall, this is a very playable experience, especially since this is the most demanding part of Hogwarts. So 75 FPS right now. Our 1% low is 31 right now, 35, uh, 21. And overall, it feels like a pretty smooth gaming experience though with like occasional dips and stutters. But it's not, uh, you know, like I said, this is the most demanding area. So I'm anticipating that it wouldn't be as big a problem in the other areas of the game. 68.22, we got seven gigs of VRAM utilization. Um, overall, I think you'd be able to play this game pretty much no problem. Um, you know, if you were to, if we were to run out here, out of the countryside a little bit, let's just pop over here real quick. Interesting, our VRAM utilization is actually going up a little bit over here. Probably because it's like now having to do the, t the textures and the city. So 7.1 gigs, 7 gigs of VRAM usage. Yeah, the game feels fairly smooth and a uh, pretty good gaming experience, primarily because of the frame gen. Without frame gen, it would be pretty rough. Uh, if we jump our... If we were to drop our resolution down to full HD... We'd obviously have an even smoother, higher FPS experience on Hogwarts, so that's good. Now, let's go and do Last of Us, and then we'll hop into Jedi Survivor. So that was the weird part. Okay, so we want to do, we're going to do quality, DLS on quality. All right, we're going to go to our options. We're going to apply the changes, go to graphics. We're going to set to ultra settings. 
Reflections, textures, where's textures? Textures, we're gonna go down to medium. If we kept the textures on ultra, we would have lots of stuttering with our 1% lows because our VRAM would be maxed. But uh, so here we are, DLSS on quality, everything's on ultra except textures are on medium. And we're getting very playable frames at 62, 39 FPS for our 1% lows. Our GPU temps have been pretty much excellent in every game we've tested so far, but our CPU temps have always been um, on the warmer side or super hot. And in this, in this scenario, we're at 79, that's pretty good. Um, so when we're only pushing 47 watts of power, uh, the Ryzen chip is really not getting that hot. Um, I do also want to point out that our RAM usage is at 14.8 gigs, which might indicate that we're running out of RAM on our system RAM because we only have 16 gigs of total RAM. And in some of the games that we've tested, we have seen uh, RAM utilization going higher than 16. Like Hogwarts likes to push 32 gigs, or sorry, 24 gigs of usage. So you, you really want 32 gigs total if you're going to try to do Hogwarts um, and certain other titles too. Steven actually says, uh, Last of Us Part 1 is heavily CPU limited. If GPU usage is low, don't bother with DLSS. Well, our GPU utilization is at 100%. So uh, I don't think that's the scenario that we're running into right now, Steven. So 16, 61 FPS for our average, 50 for our 1% low. I think you'd run in, I think aside from occasional crashing that Last of Us has sometimes, uh, I think you're going to find an excellent gaming experience with this laptop with Last of Us Part 1. Um, yeah. Let's, now that we're going to pop into the game, I'm going to reset the benchmark tool again. Now that we're about to play. And once we get done with this game, we're gonna go into Jedi Survivor and we're gonna see how the RTX 4060 fares with that one. Cause that one's gonna be really interesting. That's gonna be very demanding, very taxing. Okay, so I've reset the FPS counter now that we're playing. And this gameplay is riveting. Just the door opening skills on this girl is unreal. Do you see this newspaper right here? It's just incredible. Uh, admitted spikes at area hospitals. Okay, cool. So there's your Last of Us uh, little benchmark. Obviously, I think it's going to be very playable and no issues. We'll try turning on ray tracing. We'll see if we can do it. We'll just leave all these settings on default. There we go. Okay, so we're at 2560 by 1600. Graphics quality is set to epic. Ray tracing is enabled. Interesting, there's no DLSS option in, here, in this as far as I can see. There's AMD Super Resolution 2. We'll leave, we'll leave AMD FX Super Resolution 2 on um, quality. Okay, so... Um... We're hitting 64 FPS so far in this intro cinematic. cinematic. 54, 59. Looks like we were captured. Our VRAM is only pulling seven gigs. That's, I love to see that. Our GPU temps are 66. We are not being CPU bound at all right now. Very low CPU utilization in this game. But we'll see once we get into the actual gameplay with enemies and everything. So I'm seeing our FPS drop down a bit. We're down to 48 FPS right now. 25 for our 1% lows. Our VRAM is still hanging in there at 69, 6.9 gigs. Yeah, still 100% GPU utilization. And our temps on the CPU and GPU are great. I'm, I'm noticing that our 1% stutters just a little bit, um, you know, impacting the smoothness of the visuals here and there. Even though we're doing 70 FPS, our 1% lows now are 17. Um, this is certainly still playable, but uh, you know, ideally you want your 1% lows above 30 at least, typically. 
for a perfect visual appearance to the human eye or near perfect, you know, ideally really above 60 for your 1% lows, but at least above 30 for it to be look, look movie, movie smoothness level quality, you know? And uh, notice our VRAM jumped. We're now at 7.5 gigs. And I I'm guessing that we're now becoming VRAM limited, which is probably why we're getting our 1% low stutters. Texture quality. Let's go to medium. All right, so we're setting our textures down to medium and let's see if that impacts our 1% low stutters. I have reset. I have reset our FPS counter and yeah, wow. Interesting. Our, our VRAM went up to 7.7 .7 gigs, but the smoothness seemed to go up. Okay, so now we're at 43. Yeah, we're, we're definitely running into some VRAM limitations still, even on medium here. Let's see if we jump down to... Uh, what's here? Can we do... If we do AMD FSR, is that going to lower our VRAM requirements? I think so. Let's try performance. Okay, so that jumped us down from 7.5 gigs on the VRAM down below 7. Now we're at 7. Our 1% lows are now at 33. Our FPS is at 63 on average now. So this, this is going to be a good visual gaming experience, what we're seeing right now. Thirty-four for one percent lows. Seven point two gigs on the VRAM still, so the VRAM is still pushing near the cap, which again is not ideal. Okay, um, nice. Okay, so I think that gives you an idea of what you can expect, at least roughly, for Jedi Survivor. I kind of want to play through the game a little bit and get a save that's further along in the game. But yeah, you could definitely play Jedi Survivor with this GPU, but you're going to need to be willing to fiddle with the settings to get everything to be just how you want it. So there's the indicator light at the top. And then uh, you can see the image quality. You can quite clearly see detail on my face and, and all that. This is pretty good lighting, though. And so uh, you can also see the detail around the Lumix camera and logo there. Um, it's not super detailed, but it'll work. Uh, and people will be able to see your face, and you'll be able to do video calls and all that. But the webcam is nothing amazing. Okay, so the Legion Pro 5. Is it worth buying? I think it is kind of is, but it's there's a lot of complex um, questions that are going into this purchase, okay? So first of all, now that I've had a lot more time to test a ton of different laptops, this is like laptop 19 for me that I've reviewed and tested a ton of games on um, this year for this new generation. And I've basically settled on the opinion that if you're gonna get with an RTX 4050, 4060, or 4070, you gotta go into that purchase uh, understanding what VRAM is and how that affects your gameplay with full HD and QHD resolutions. Full HD resolution, you're typically gonna be okay at eight gigs of VRAM, um, but even at, even at full HD resolution, um, you're gonna still run into VRAM limitations. At QHD, it's gonna be pretty severe in some situations where you're gonna have to maybe even reduce your whole resolution down or utilize DLSS or AMD FSR to lower your rendered resolution so that you don't have severe stuttering when you run out of VRAM. That's gonna be a big deal 
because the Pro 5, as far as I know, only comes with a QHD resolution display. I've, there are probably gonna be Legion 5 versions that come with full HD plus resolution displays, but this leads me to recommend to users because of the VRAM limitations, unless you go up to an RTX 4080 or 4090, generally speaking, it's better to pair the 4050, 4060, and 4070 with full HD uh, panels, um, simply because of the VRAM problems in the newer games. Uh, it'll just be way less of a problem for you as a user. That said, if you're an advanced user and you really want a QHD display, and you're okay with turning the resolution or textures down or adjusting DLSS or FSR to make it all work um, so you don't have the 1% lows in those games, it's no problem, you can do it. You can push, you can get a QHD display and have a great time in the titles that you don't run into VRAM limitations and you can tweak the titles that, um, you can tweak the titles that do have the VRAM limitations to get by them and still have good performance. Um, overall, I like the build quality. You've got the metal top lid of this laptop You've got the metal keyboard deck and you got some metal on the bottom. It's a lot of metal on this with some plastic in between uh, mixed in. The uh, build quality feels very rigid and firm and, and sturdy. Taking the laptop apart was fairly easy. It only took a couple minutes to unscrew all the screws and pop it open. Um, upgrades on the inside are fairly easy to access. Also, you have access to your memory as well as the two SSD slots. Um, and if you want to repaste, it's only a heat pipe, so it's possible. The heat pipes, uh, or sorry, the, the paste job appears to have been uh, botched or messed up on this unit. The CPU going up to 100 degrees Celsius almost instantly in almost all CPU heavy loads was very disappointing to me. Um, and it leads me to, to wonder if, yeah, it leads me to wonder if Lenovo just didn't do a very good job from the factory for that CPU only. The GPU almost always had superbly awesome temperatures, almost no problem ever with the GPU temps, uh, going above even 70, 75, almost never went above 70. It was usually in the sixties in most of the games and titles that we played. Now, uh, the CPU performance for the Ryzen 7 7745HX CPU was really good. It was very competitive with Intel and other um, eight core 16 thread parts. We got 17,800 in Cinebench R23, which is, it's very good for a laptop under $1,500. That's phenomenal. We also saw very good performance on battery mode. So battery mode, we still got over 15,000 for Cinebench R23. Um, and, it, and it was only pulling 45 watts to the CPU and it was still pushing that much performance. That's phenomenal. So if you need a laptop that can, uh, uh, handle CPU heavy tasks when on battery mode, this is gonna be a really good option. Now, of course, you'd wanna get one that has a CPU paste job that was done properly. Um, and that's gonna help our, our, our temperatures. I imagine that this was just, uh, I got unlucky. This is what happens when you don't get review units. You just buy laptops that are regular laptops for manufacturers to review like I do. And uh, they don't get pre-tested or pre-selected. So, and I, obviously this level of testing that we're doing uh, in these live streams is beyond what most reviewers do anyway. So we can identify these problems that users would face if they get the laptop in for a long time and they run into these kinds of issues like the, pe the paste job being bad. And that's something that usually should be found very quickly. Um, but sadly, a lot of reviewers don't really check that stuff um, very well. The port selection on this guy, really good. You got four USB-A's, you got three USB-C's, you got an ethernet port, um, headset port. There's not much you could really ask for, maybe besides, I mean, you could say you'd rather have maybe a mini display port instead of one of the USB-C's, but I think most people would rather have another USB-C. So I like the port selection. I kind of wish they had a full-size SD card slot. If I were to criticize it, that would probably be maybe take one of the USB-A's off or USB-C's and put a full-size SD card slot. That would be better in my opinion. Um, but overall, the port selection is quite good. The display quality, a QHD plus, so 16 by 10 aspect ratio, 356 nits brightness, uh, 930 to one contrast ratio. Uh, it's very bright, it's very vibrant, it's very responsive. Uh, it's just not as vibrant as the competition. We only had a 92% sRGB, 72% uh, P3 and Adobe RGB. Uh, if you were to bump 
those up because my tools tends to underestimate, then it's closer to 100% sRGB and about 80% Adobe or P3 color gamut, which is, it's a good display, especially for $1,500. Uh, it's just not as colorful and bright and vibrant as some of the other displays in certain laptops, like in the Pulse 15, it's 100% Adobe RGB or close to, uh, you know, it's a much, it's a higher color gamut, but it, Overall, this is still a good display, uh, especially for the price point. The QHD 240 Hz display is supposed to be brighter and more vibrant though. So if you do get an option to get that uh, display option in your laptop in the Legion uh, Pro 5, then just know that it'll be brighter and it won't really be more colorful though. So that's the other downside. Um, I think the Lenovo lineup just doesn't really offer that colorful display that designers and video gamers might want because uh, a lot of other manufacturers this year, especially Asus, are pushing just really high color gamut displays that are just very vibrant and punchy and uh, more gorgeous, especially the mini LED options. So in some ways, I think Lenovo is being outclassed in the display department, but not necessarily for the money. This is a good display for the money. Giant thumbs up for that part of the laptop. The keyboard, awesome keyboard, feels great, love the layout. The backlight options are good. They illuminate everything you need and... Uh, it's an effective layout. You've got all these secondary functions. You've got a full-size number pad, full-size arrow keys. I love the keyboard on the Lenovo series. Giant thumbs up there. The touchpad. I had an issue getting the touchpad to click properly. Um, the physical click, it would click physically, but not actually click on the screen. Another little minor thing that could really annoy you, and it's likely only on this unit, which probably means I have to return this unit regardless of if I were to replace the CPU or not. Um, but typically speaking, I would say that um, the touchpad issue is probably not going to affect most users. It's probably this touchpad in particular that's faulty, um, though it could be a driver issue. And if it is a driver issue, it's going to be fixable. And though in the meantime, it could affect a lot of users. Um, what else do we want to talk about? Let's talk about um, performance in actual games. The vast majority of games out there, you're not going to run into VRAM limitations, but the newer games, you will, right? That's the thing. And you're pushing the QHD 20, 2560 by 1600 resolution. It just makes me want to recommend a full HD display for gaming, not only because you get more FPS, but also because you're not going to run into those VRAM problems nearly as often. Um, but in terms of QHD gaming, if you're willing to tweak the settings to get to the right settings, you're going to have a great experience on this laptop. But it just feels like this laptop, out of the box, a lot of casual users are going to be like, I just bought this laptop for $1,500 and it can't even play Jedi Survivor. What the heck is going on? It's stuttering like crazy. How do I fix this? You know, it's going to be very challenging for, for casual people who don't understand how to modify their settings or what's going on in the background. So if you buy this laptop, know that you're going to have to change the VRAM down or maybe lower the resolution or lower your DLSS or your FSR settings to be able to get that playable smooth frame rates. Um, and if you're willing to make those changes, this is a good option for you, I think, all right? Even with the QHD, um, like if I was buying a laptop, I would still get a QHD. If I had $1,500, I would get a QHD display still, and I would be able, I would just go through and tweak the settings to make sure I had good playable frame rates in whatever games that I'm playing, including those really high demanding games. So um, I don't think that's gonna be too much of a problem. Now for battery life, this has the new Ryzen chip and it's an eight core, 16 part chip. And I'm, I have not been able to do detailed battery testing, but I'm confident that you can get in the five to seven hours range um, ballpark at least for battery life um, for web browsing. And probably more than that, if you're doing like idling with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth off and brightness down to like the halfway point or something. So you're probably more like eight hours with idling or more. Um, it's obviously gonna be a bit more power efficient than a lot of the Intel chips out there because of the uh, Ryzen uh, process being at a smaller nanometer. And uh, the overall performance of this thing, I think, it's, I think it's, it's good, it's just, the CPU paste job and the touchpad issue with my unit would make me want to return this one that I got. But that doesn't necessarily mean all of the Lenovo Pro 5s out there are gonna have those same issues. And uh, I think likely they won't, as a matter of fact. I think most of them will be just fine. So I don't think that necessarily just because mine had those issues, it should sway you from buying 
necessarily, but I would check other reviews and make sure that other reviewers are not seeing similar temperature issues to what I'm having. Cause we saw 102 degrees in dead space, like just nonstop, which is not good. Um, and that's with the default fan profiles and all the settings set to however it's supposed to be. All right, drop a like if you enjoyed the live stream and be sure to subscribe and come back for more. See you in the next one.